All right, so first let's take a look at uh, customer care, passenger safety, and how a professional motor coach driver handles this to make sure that they give their customers uh, and their passengers not only a safe trip, but a positive experience. So as, as a professional, uh, a great motor coach driver, uh, you have to be able to, man to maneuver your vehicle, very large vehicle. Uh, Jeff touched on a lot of those things about, about city driving, especially. Um, you need to make sure that you, you, you know, maintain that professional demeanor uh, and treat your passengers with kid gloves. I mean, you, 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 the, the bottom line is at the end of the day, you want to make sure that they have a great trip. All right, so preparation is, is, is the first thing. Jeff touched on the preparation uh, when he talked about the pre-trip items, uh, but there's some other things as a professional that you guys, you know, most of you I'm sure are, are well aware of. Uh, making sure, number one, you're well-rested. A uh, well-rested motor coach driver drives more safely and has better a better experience for the passengers, a better experience in the driving. Uh, with COVID also uh, being, you know, a part of our daily lives now, if you are experiencing any uh, symptoms from COVID, you're going to want to make sure that you get a hold of your uh, company well ahead of time and let them know that. Uh, medications, you know, sometimes we take medications for different things whether it's a regular medication that you have to take or something you picked up at the, the pharmacy. The big thing is make sure whatever you're using doesn't affect your ability to drive safely. Uh, a lot of over-the-counter medications can cause drowsiness. So make sure any of those kind of things that you're taking, it's daytime formulas. It's things that don't cause drowsiness. And the other thing that you can do, you can check with the pharmacist. You know, sometimes those things may interact with medications that you may take on a regular basis. So make sure, you know, it's okay to take certain medications uh, as long as they don't affect your ability to drive. So Jeff mentioned, you know, number one, before you start driving, make, you know, make sure you go over the details of the trip, map out the, the trip. Don't just rely on the GPS. Uh, go over the instructions the group gave. There, there could be special instructions that you can uh, be aware of before you ever head out the, the, you know, off the parking lot and off to pick up your passengers. You know, check your, with COVID again, I know we, we, we we're dealing with this. There can be different, different rules, uh, regulations, requirements, it, depending where you're going. Um, make sure you, you are aware of any local uh, guidelines or restrictions both for where you're at and anywhere that your trip may go, where you may stop, uh, that's all extremely important. Make sure, you know, know your passenger group, know who it is that you're supposed to be getting a hold of when you get to that pickup location. Who's the group leader? Because you're, you're really going to want to make sure that when you get there, it, it doesn't seem like you're kind of struggling for uh, information. You should appear like you you know what's going on, you know who to talk to, and you can get with that person and get more details about the trip before you head out. Jeff talked about the pre-trip, and, and the pre-trip is, is huge for all of the reasons there. You know, catching those things, not only is it a requirement, but but it, it finds all these problems, right, before you get out on the road. Uh, if you can find it at the, at the yard uh, and have somebody address it, get a hold of a mechanic, um, you know, lights that could be out or other issues. You may have to change change buses. You know, maybe that maybe you find it, but the last thing you want to do is be out on the road and have something happen, a mechanical problem, a breakdown, something like that that could have been avoided if you, you know, I mean, how many times has that happened to us? We we rush through a pre-trip and we head out on the road and, and the next thing you know, we, we we're on the side of the highway because one of the belts broke and, and maybe we could have caught that before we left the, the yard. All right, so, so as, let's talk a little bit about the passenger, the safety, the service that we're gonna provide to our passengers. All right, so once you do get to the pickup location, right, you're, you make sure you find a good place to park where you're not in traffic, you know, uh, 
that can be difficult depending on where the group's chosen. I know, you know, we've all been, we've all been in a situation where we get to a pickup location and, and parking is very tight or, or there's not a real good location. So try and find somewhere, you know, if you have to back into a spot, you, you know, you're going to want to do your backing when you get to the location versus pulling in somewhere that you have to back out of later because you never know what the situation is going to be when it's time to leave. Uh, make sure the, that it's well lit. Find the group leader, you know, smile, make eye contact, greet them by name. You should ha have that information. Uh, go over the route, make sure you understand where they're going to stop, how long those stops might be. Do they want to stop at a rest area somewhere along the way, or are they looking to stop at a restaurant? Uh, go over any of the company protocols in place with COVID. Uh, you know, everybody has different rules, regulations that the company has set up uh, with, with those protocols, social distancing, uh, and, you know, find out from the group leader, because the groups themselves may have additional protocols in place for for their people and, and how they need things to, to work. So everything runs smoothly. So you're gonna wanna make sure you go over that with the group leaders and have all that information. Uh, also good to kind of go over with them who's going to you know, operate the, the video system, who's gonna be in charge of those things. If it's something they can do, that way you're not, you, know, you don't wanna be messing with those things while you're driving. So you may wanna go over how some of that stuff works with the group leader if they're gonna do that. And, uh, you know, how the armrests go up and down, how the seats go back and forth, okay? So good information to go over with the group leader at the pickup prior uh, to loading passengers and heading down the road. Control the access to your coach. Don't just leave the door open and walk away. Uh, you want to make sure that you're going to board your passengers. You don't want to have, you know, be in the baggage bin, loading luggage, and you got people going up and down the stairs if you can avoid it, right? We've all been in situations where, you know, sometimes you're trying to do things, people are coming in at different times, they're getting stuff set up in the coach, you know, try as much as you can to be at the door assisting rather than being stuck inside the baggage bins in case somebody needs help or assistance, you know, entering or exiting the coach. You know, it, it's, it's very difficult to run back and forth. So maybe a good thing is to just have everybody if the weather's cooperating, you know, set all the bags on the side, get everybody loaded up until it's mostly situated, and then you can go and, and load luggage. Uh, again, uh, while you're assisting the passengers, uh, following the social distancing, PPE guidelines, uh, all of those things related to the COVID situation. Make sure you introduce yourself once everybody's on the coach. You know, I, I try to always tell the drivers that I worked with in the past, you know, stand, stand at the front of the coach, face your passengers and, and speak to them. It's, it's very uh, informal and, and not very safe to be trying to talk on the microphone, making your announcements to the passengers as you're pulling away from a location. So try and get that done. Play your safety video. If you have a safety video, that'll help. You can just do a brief introduction. You can ask the passengers to watch the video and then that can actually be running as you pull away. So uh, you also, you're gonna wanna make sure that you stress to the passengers that they try and stay seated as long as much as possible uh, while you're going down the road. Let's talk a little bit about the actual driving. Jeff talked about it, minimum six seconds following distance, you know, obey your speed limits, adjust for weather, all those things that Jeff mentioned in the, in the previous presentation are, are critical to providing a good experience for the passengers. Signaling, allow others to pass, you know, give up you, your uh, rights almost uh, to, you know, let everybody else around you do what they're going to do and you adjust to them. Okay, you may have the right of way, but it's time as a professional to sit back, slow down and let everybody else do what they're going to do around you. You'll have a lot less to adjust. Uh, you know, you have to not let other drivers 
you know, they're going to do, we've all been there. You've all seen it. They do stupid things. Okay. Uh, and it can be very frustrating. It can raise your blood pressure. It can really upset you. You have to remember there's people behind you. You're a professional. And if, if you're the guy there on the left shaking their fist or, or, or screaming and yelling because somebody does something that they shouldn't have, it's not going to look very professional to your passengers. Um, uh, you know, that upper mirror in the center there, glance up every now and then, make sure passengers aren't standing. If they are, you're gonna, you know, make sure you remind them, uh, you know, please get sit down as, as, as soon as you can, as soon as you're done in the baggage bin, whatever they might be doing up there in those overhead bins, make sure they close those things, right? There, there's been plenty of claims that have arised from passengers that leave those overhead bin doors open and something falls out. So. The best that you can uh, try and control that. Uh, obviously, you're not going to stare in that mirror for long periods at a time, but uh, and then communicate with the passengers as you're getting close to arrival points, letting them know, you know, what the process is going to be when you get there, how long you're going to be there, and when it's going to be time to go. Make sure they check for personal belongings, right? Anything sitting on the floor. Uh, we all know that things get left on the bus no matter how much you do that. And some lost and found departments end up with, with tons and tons of stuff. And, and that can, we can help avoid that by reminding people to check uh, for their belongings before they get off the coach. And then also work with the group leader at the end of the day, right? Do a, do a sweep of the bus, uh, see if you can find anything. So you can get that to them and not take it back to the company. All right, so arrival and wrap up of the trip. Let's go ahead and move to that. Um, again, just like when we're loading, we're gonna try and stand at the door, unload the passengers first, let everybody get off. Uh, again, following those COVID-19 protocols. And then once everybody's off the coach, you can start unloading their baggage from underneath. Uh, anytime you can, you're gonna wanna try and keep that coach door closed, you know, locked if possible, but at least closed so that you're controlling who's getting on and off the bus and stressing there whenever possible, stand at the bottom of the stairs, offer assistance so anybody coming down doesn't fall. You know, the customers see you. They don't see the salespeople. They don't see the president. They don't see your dispatchers. They see you. You're the face of the company. So remember that goes as well to off-duty time, right? I mean, it is your time, it is off-duty time, but some things, you know, maybe sitting, you know, I'm sure plenty of you, if you're on overnight trips, they go to hotels, they have, we've all been in the hotels, they have a nice lounge and people go in, they have some drinks, maybe not the best choice for a professional driver. Even though it's, it's you know, the night before, or whatever, it just, it doesn't look good. OK, so the passengers will be going back and forth you're, you're through the lobbies, through the lounges, and, and you don't want to be uh, seen in there with, you know, a whole table full of empty beer bottles in front of you or something. All right, let's talk a little bit about about some of the unplanned or emergency stops that we can run into and how you should handle that. So in any medical emergencies, okay, you assist the passengers if you're medically trained. You don't wanna be offering assistance if you don't know what it is you're doing. And unless, you know, if, if they, if somebody needs, if they're bleeding or something serious that, that you have to try and help as best you can, again, try and only go to what your abilities are. Maybe somebody in the bus is medically trained. Maybe there's a passenger or something. Stop somewhere safe, get help on the way, call 911 and try and make sure that you deal with those the best way that you possibly can. Uh, every now and then you, we run into some of these, some of you may have, have run into checkpoints for different reasons and you know, keep the passengers informed best you can, uh, explain to them what's happening and, and try and get through the checkpoint and, and move on. But you know, the, the best thing again, in keeping your passengers informed about, about what you're dealing with there uh, is gonna be helpful for both you and for them. Um, we're going to touch on this a lot in the neck in the last presentation, but just real quick, you know, nobody wants to be in an accident. Some of you may have been involved in, in an accident, uh, whether it be a serious accident or a minor accident, you know, biggest thing you can do following all these steps, but the biggest thing is to remain calm. 
whatever happened happened there's nothing you can do to change that and so now you've got to go through the process of making sure that you take care of people get help on the way um, gather the information so that there's you know take some pictures and all those and we'll touch on that more uh, when we get into that that training session but but staying calm in front of your passengers is, is the key if you do have a mechanical breakdown no matter you know we've all it's uh, it's happened to everybody i'm sure at some point uh, if not uh, good for you <laughs> um, but even even doing a good thorough pre-trip doesn't mean something won't go wrong so Make sure that what, if that happens, that you get to a safe location if possible, off the road, put out your triangles. And, the, and again, keeping the people informed of, of what's happening, if helps on the way, how long it might be, uh, that, that helps with their uh, experience as well. Bob's gonna talk a lot about fatigue uh, and how it affects us, but you know the big thing, watch for the warning signs. If you start feeling any symptoms of fatigue, get the bus stopped in a safe location, get out and get some fresh air. And if that's not working, if there's other issues going on, make sure that you call your company, let them know and they can get another driver on the way uh, to help relieve you if need be. So just remember as a professional, uh, you know, you have some responsibilities both to yourself and to the passengers to make sure that you know what's going on, make sure you're well rested. And then as things happen, you, you have to roll with the punches, keep people informed uh, and, and make good decisions. And, and if you don't know, if, if something odd happens that you've never dealt with before, call, call your company and get some help, uh, get some, some suggestions from them on how to, how to move forward and make sure you keep your passengers informed all the time. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and move to the second uh, set of second set of uh, slides. Uh, we're going to touch on technology a little bit, uh, just real briefly, um, and, and how it ties into what what you need to know as a driver. And I mean, I know personally as as the technology has evolved, things have changed, and, and it's changed a lot of uh, how we how we do things. Uh, and there's also some important things to know about how this technology gets used. So technology is all around us now and it's, in, it's, it's made its way into the motor coaches. We've got GPS units, you know, Jeff spoke about some you know, ELDs and you got an ELD screen. Some drivers have their GPS screen up there. We got cell phones, tire pressure sensors, all kinds of things going on around us. So we got bells and whistles and lights make sure you understand what all that stuff means, how it works, okay? Uh, how this stuff gets documented, how the, how the information is stored. Uh, it, that's all important because, you know, you have to remember that this stuff is, uh, it's out there and it's discoverable if you're ever involved in any type of claim. So the big things to remember with the newer technologies is how they might you know, as a driver, when you're going down the road, how many times you've been going down the road, all of a sudden your, your GPS or your, uh, your ELD unit uh, flashes at you and, and it, it's warning you, you know, you're getting close to a violation or, or maybe the, the tire pressure sensor is showing a problem. How do you deal with that? Do you understand how it works or do you just ignore it, right? So ignoring it is not necessarily the, the way to go. You know, when there are claims, these things are, are all discoverable. They're being brought in. Uh, plaintiffs are asking a lot of questions and they're gathering a lot of data. So make sure that you know that this information and data is out there. Uh, if you're just ignoring warning systems, uh, that information could be used later uh, you know, to wonder why you didn't do something about it. Uh, if there's warning systems before you ever leave the garage, you know, make sure that you, you determine is that tire pressure sensor is it accurate? Is there really a problem? Or you know, check the tires with a tire gauge. You know, don't if you're if you think everything's good, uh, check the tires. And, and if there is a problem, you can get it corrected. And if not, if all the tires are good and there's a, a malfunction with the unit, you know, document that somewhere. Have a mechanic document that so that in the if if something comes up later, they can see that you didn't just ignore it. Uh, same thing with the electronic data that's coming off of GPS units and, and you know, all of our new uh, ELD systems or, or a lot of them are given 
warnings back to the management team of speed, harsh braking, all of those things. Uh, that stuff is out there. So make sure that you're aware your logs, if, if you need to make corrections, make the corrections uh, and make sure that you use the technology because it, it's very useful, but you have to be careful that it doesn't become a distraction or a problem later. Another a list of things that have come up during, during some claims, right? They want phone records, driver's records, uh, ELD information. They even go back and get training records where drivers trained. You know, do you, when you go through training, is your company documenting that and showing that you were actually trained? Because if they're not, you know, in the eyes of, of the law and in the eyes of everybody else, if, you know, if it wasn't documented, it never happened. So, and if it is, there's records of that. So make sure you're aware how that all works, both with your phone records, your ELD records, and any of that data that's being collected now from the computers in, in our coaches. So the next section, we're going to talk how to, about managing an accident scene. If you, you know, we've all have that fear in the back of our mind, even though we're doing things right, okay, it doesn't necessarily have to be your fault, but you might be uh, involved in an accident. And so we have a series of short clips, and then I'll, I'll just touch on the high points of each one in between, and then we'll discuss everything after. So let's go ahead and run the first one. As a professional driver, the possibility of an accident is something you have to be prepared for. When an accident occurs, from a minor sideswipe to a major collision, everyone looks to you and your professional experience for leadership, guidance, and assistance. Fortunately, most accident situations are the fender bender type, but accidents can be much more serious and sometimes even tragic. When an accident occurs, what you do and how you do it will make a difference. Every accident will present different situations and conditions, so you must carefully consider your reactions. Know what you can and must do. As importantly, know what you should avoid doing. Here it is, the accident no one wanted or expected. The SUV's driver was texting on his cell phone and rear-ended the legally stopped motor coach at a stop sign. Witnesses include a pedestrian on one corner, the coach's passengers, and the SUV's driver. As a professional driver, you have four major duties at an accident scene. First, protect your passengers and the scene. Second, get help. Third, assist others at the scene. And fourth, gather and exchange information. Take a moment to collect yourself, take stock of your physical condition, stay calm, and begin to take action. Is everybody all right? It appears we've been rear-ended. Please stay seated with your seatbelts on. Okay, so real quick, just on this one, as you've seen in the video, the, the driver, the coach did nothing wrong. He was sitting at a stop sign, he gets rear-ended. So this is probably a minor type accident. Uh, doesn't look like anybody was injured, uh, but we still have to follow the same procedures, whether it's a major accident or just a minor fender bender. And, and make sure that you remember, whenever this happens, there's certain steps, and we'll talk about those more uh, at the end. They touched on them, you know, protecting the scene, getting help, assisting your uh, passengers and anybody else that needs it, and then gathering that information. Uh, but just remember, everybody's looking at you, okay? All your passengers look to you, so keep them informed. Stay calm, okay? They mentioned it, stay calm. Step one, protect your passengers and the scene. Safety is your primary concern. Begin to protect the scene by activating your four-way flashers and quickly follow up with the proper placement of warning devices. Tell your passengers what has happened. Reassure them and make a firm request that for their own safety, they remain on board the coach. When possible, enlist the aid of those in charge, such as a group or tour director to maintain passenger control. Okay, everybody remain calm. Whether you leave your vehicle where it is or until the police arrive or move it off the road to a point of safety will depend on several factors, including state laws limiting your choices. Generally, if you are blocking the road following a minor accident and moving it would help clear the way, you should consider moving to the side. If your coach is in a hazardous position where it is likely to be hit again, we recommend you move it. 
But before you move the coach, you should take several photographs of the exact location where the vehicles collided and where they came to rest. You may only have a moment or two to do this, so do it promptly. Wherever your vehicle is stopped, and you know it will be in that location for more than a brief period, protect the situation by setting out warning flares or triangles. Placing these warning devices is a matter of regulation, and their position will vary according to the situation and road configuration at the accident scene. Once you have activated your flashers and properly positioned your warning triangles or flares, you've done what you can to protect the scene. Now, assess the situation. Check the other vehicle involved in the crash and the condition of its occupants. Protecting the scene includes your top priority of protecting your passengers. They are usually safest when they are on the coach. So keep everyone on board unless conditions demand emergency unloading, such as the urgent need for medical attention or the risk of fire. Control access into and off of your coach by keeping the doors closed. Okay, so real briefly on this one, just remember, again, safety is the primary concern. Once, once this has happened, we need to protect the scene. We need to get our triangles placed properly. If you can move the coach, again, go ahead and do so. Move it off to the side. But, but remember, before you move the coach, take some pictures. Take pictures of where the vehicles are where the accident happened, debris fields are, are critical uh, a lot of times. Um, a lot of us now have video cameras uh, in, the, in the front of the coach, uh, but in the case of the accident we saw it happened in the back, so that wouldn't happen. So take some good pictures, even if you have to move the vehicle, protect the scene. And then the other thing that's important is if at all possible, you wanna make sure everybody stays on the bus and they're not out wandering around. Step two, get help. You've got to make sure the help you need is on the way. Hi, there's been an accident with two vehicles. Try to summon the help yourself with your cell phone, or if this is not possible, enlist the aid of the tour director or other passenger to contact first responders. Do not leave the scene yourself to get help. First, call for police and emergency services. Be prepared to answer questions about where you are, what help you need, and whether or not there are injuries. There's no fire, no fuel leak, and no apparent injuries. Please send assistance. Next, advise your company of the accident. Your supervisor can offer necessary guidance, replacement equipment, and when possible, send a company representative to the scene to help you with some of the post-accident duties. It is also to everyone's advantage to contact Lancer Insurance Company's 24-7 claims hotline at 800-521-6155. Lancer will dispatch a highly trained field investigator to assist you and your passengers with the variety of problems from injuries and damaged property to delayed arrivals, family notifications, and if necessary, temporary accommodations for those who might be stranded. Okay, so... You know, we talk about making sure we get help, uh, you know, call for help, give good information where you're at, what type of help is needed, especially whether, you know, whether or not it appears there's any, or in, any injuries is important. Uh, they mentioned if you can't do that because you're dealing with other things, maybe have the group leader uh, do that. Point out somebody specific, though. Don't just throw a general thing out for, you know, would somebody please do this? Make sure you, you direct somebody if you need that done good information. Do not leave the scene as the driver, okay? You, that can create huge problems later. Uh, you're going to want to contact your company. Once you've protected the scene and everything's kind of settled down for a second, contact the company. Let them know what's happened so that they can start dealing with things on their end. And then they also mention at some point, you're going to want to contact the insurance carrier. So they said Lancer, obviously, uh, we may have uh, quite a few people on here who are not insured with Lancer. So you're going to want to contact your insurance company uh, or, or have you know somebody from the company at least do that initial call to let them know that there's been a claim and then the data that's gathered can be given to them later. Step three, assist others. There are priorities that you should use to see that those most in need get assistance first. 
When it comes to providing aid to injured parties, first, send for professional medical help. Then, actively seek out individuals at the scene who may be trained or qualified to offer medical assistance. Does anybody on board have medical training? Yes, I do. Finally, in your own actions and for your own protection, be guided by Good Samaritan rules. These rules generally state that you should limit your aid to a distressed person to the extent of your training. If you are not trained or qualified in first aid procedures, you should not do anything of a first aid or medical nature. The care and safety of your passengers is always your primary duty. Keeping them advised of what is occurring goes a long way in helping everyone stay calm. In a vehicular accident, keeping your passengers on board the coach is usually best for their safety and comfort. But if you must evacuate the coach, select a point of safety off the road, assist passengers off the coach, and politely but firmly direct them to the designated area. If there's going to be a significant delay, or if you won't be able to continue the trip, you must provide for the needs of your passengers. If all of the passengers are moved at the same time to the same location, complications are reduced. Your supervisor or a company representative can help you with arranging for a substitute vehicle. Communication. Your passengers will want and need to communicate with those at their original destination or return point. So work first with a group leader to identify their most important concerns. Okay, so, so once one of these things has happened, we wanna make sure uh, any aid, uh, you wanna make sure you're getting help for passengers. And they mention again, Good Samaritan laws, uh, only render aid that you're qualified to render. Uh, maybe somebody on the bus has medical experience. Maybe, you know, maybe you've been involved in one of these things and, and somebody shows up on the scene and runs up and says, you know, hey, I'm, I'm a nurse. Uh, I, is there anybody that needs help? Uh, keep passengers on the bus, uh, if at all possible, unless it's just too dangerous. But the best thing you can do is keep that door closed, keep the passengers on board. And then they stress in here communication. It's, it's extremely important, not only the communication back to the company, but the communication to your passengers, to the group leader, keeping them informed. Step four, gather and exchange information. Gathering and exchanging information is just as critical as anything else you will do to effectively manage the accident scene. Distribute passenger courtesy cards and ask your passengers to complete the information requested. Besides getting information from your passengers, try to locate others at the scene who may have seen something of significance. Try to have them complete a courtesy card with their name and telephone number. It also may be possible to get information from those in the other vehicle involved in the crash. As you collect courtesy cards, read the information provided. Make sure that the name and telephone information sections are complete, so if necessary, those listed can be contacted at a later date. Police statements. Often the police will ask you for your version of the situation. Don't rush into an explanation. By law, you only need to identify yourself, your vehicle, company, and insurance carrier. Nothing else is required. Remember, the police are conducting a criminal investigation, and for that reason alone, you do not have to make any statement. If pressured, say that your company policy forbids you from making any other immediate statements. Take photographs. You should always have a camera, cell phone, or otherwise on board your coach. A cell phone camera is definitely sufficient. If you don't have one, borrow one from a passenger and take photographs of your vehicle, the other involved vehicles, and the scene. Take a minimum of four shots of each vehicle, one of each side, even the areas not damaged, and four shots of the overall scene, one from each point on the compass. Take other photos that help tell the observer what happened. Take photos of tire marks, debris in the road, the immediate location, and even photos which include bystanders. These photos could prove to be priceless. One cautionary note, do not take photographs of people involved in the accident, especially those who have been injured. Make no statements. Despite a natural tendency to verbally defend yourself, we urge you to make no statements to anyone. Never assign blame, never apologize, and never promise anything. If the media is present and want a quote from you, you've got to refuse. 
If you are cornered, tell them you are upset and unable to discuss the situation. Then move away to a place where you can be left alone. Rather than trying to react and counter what others might be saying, go about gathering information at the scene, including your photographs, police information, the agency, name and badge number, the police report number, names of others involved, their insurance information, and if relevant, hospitals where the injured have been taken. Okay, so you know, the other thing we have to do when this is all wrapping up is, is get good information for not only the company, but for the insurance carrier in case there's going to be a claim. Uh, the, the big thing, getting, getting witnesses' names and, and contact information. Uh, and then the photographs, uh, again, can't stress enough how important those photographs can be in helping uh, to determine what happened. You know, and they mentioned making no statements and, and this, you know, keep in mind, if it's a minor thing, you bumped into a car and then there's a scratch or something, it, you know, and, the, and it's obvious what happened, but making no statements at any type, any more of a major scene, uh, just give them, you know, name, rank, serial number kind of thing, the, the required information about the vehicle, your insurance carrier, uh, don't make promises, don't, don't apologize, okay, because uh, that can that can automatically uh, means you're assuming some some level of of responsibility or guilt even if it wasn't your problem. Uh, the media the media can be a problem uh, if they show up at, at, and this is going to be a, a you know maybe at a bigger uh, type of of event uh, more major accident. Don't talk to the media. Don't allow your passengers to talk to the media. Uh, if you have to go in the bus, close the door and control that, uh, only let the uh, law enforcement uh, into the coach at that point. Uh, the media does not have uh, automatic access to your vehicle unless you uh, give it to them. 